Sidecoin. So, so cycling has been out for so long. I got burn on this back here. So again, 2018 failed to put in new all time highs. Just doesn't do it for me, you know? So Sycoin is a native coconut of Psy, the blockchain distributed based distributed decentralized cloud storage platform. Sycoin acts as a secure trustless marketplace for cloud storage in which users can lease access to their unused storage space. Arguments and transactions are enforced with smart contracts and Psy. Sycoin is the medium of exchange for paying for storage on the network. Um, Sycoin was originally announced in May of 2014 before being revised and re-announced a year later in May of 2015. It officially launched in June of 2015. I mean, so you got you got a product that's been out for seven years now, and they and they don't have a market cap above 216 million in this industry. That's a red flag, and most likely because of I would assume a high inflation rate. So they calling it Cynet now instead of Cycoin. 00420. 00. Okay, so same project. Yeah. Now it's called Sky, Sky, Net, Skynet. Sounds like Back to the Future. Get to the chopper. I said get down. They got a 3.31% inflation rate with an infinite supply. The 19, the year 2050 projected supply is 991 billion coins. So you got an old type of storage network. You got Filecoin, you got AR Weave, you got Flux, you got uh, so many different storage networks. I would just say with an infinite, I would say hard, hard pass. But let's take a look at their code. I do think the project's legit, but So they're not even using GitHub. There's their GitHub. Last updated, only 289 comments. Only four contributors. Yeah, it doesn't impress me. I don't think it'll make you any money next bull run. Actually, I'm not even sure what what coding language in that in. That might be uh let's see. What makes Sidecoin unique? According to its white paper, the long term goal of Sidecoin is to complete compete with existing storage solutions. It seems it's uh itself as being a direct competition with major cloud storage platform providers such as Amazon, Google, Microsoft. And you guys, they've had six years to do it and they haven't. Skynet, the company behind Sycoin and Sycoin, uh, has announced several products built on top of the Sci network, including SciStream, a cloud-based media streaming application, and, Sky, and the Sky network, uh, its flagship content delivery and file sharing network. The company has received several rounds of funding and grants um, from uh, Bain Capital, a paradigm and e in blockchain. In addition, each storage, blah, 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 blah. Uh, in, oh, hold on. What did they say? In, ex in exchange, 
In addition, each uh, each storage-related transaction on the Sycoin network is subject to a 3.9% fee, which is distributed to holders of the company's second second cryptocurrency, Sci Fund. So you have a second cryptocurrency it's called Sky Fund, and with Skynet being uh, holding approximately 85% of all Sci Funds. So you got Sci Fund, which is the second coin. So that takes away from the utility of Sci Coin, right? Anytime you're breaking a coin up into two different tokens, I've never seen it be a plus, which normally ends up the governance token normally ends up tanking, and then the big VCs will buy up all the governance token because they because it's outside of a vote, you don't really need it, um, and then then you know retail investors never get a chance to actually win a vote. Because if there's ever anything to question. Well, I mean, these guys obviously got money. They run the company. They'll just buy a bunch more of the coin. Okay, so a new side coin is introduced as mining rewards through the side blockchain proof of work mining algorithm. The mining reward started at 30,000 Psi and decreased at a rate of one side coin with each block mined until they reached 30,000 side coin in July of 2020. The block rewards will now forever remain at 30,000 side coin. Sycoin is removed from the ecosystem when hosts lose tokens or their collateral is left un unre unrefunded due to bad actions. In the future, the development of the team intends to introduce a proof of burn mechanism by which the host will be required to burn a small percentage of their revenues to prove that they are real and have good intentions. So I got to burn Sycoin to be a node operator? The Sci development team mined approximately... 100 blocks around 30 million Psycoin before publicly launching. So you got a pre-mine in there. And you know how the regulators are hating on ETH for the pre-mine? That's red flag. That's just an instant. It's like almost like an ICO for me. If I see, see pre-mine, I will never touch it. So I doubt that they use formal verification. Uh, they are proof of work. Uh, but they have a governance token and a pre-mine and a whole bunch of things. It's hard to call that decentralized, but... Uh, we'll put it like no idea and if you got a pre-mine you're gonna be you're gonna you're gonna fail the howie test and that's what you don't want to do or sorry you're gonna pass the howie test you want to fail the howie test and what i think will happen is if like we talked about it several times is if regulators come in uh, if regulators come in and they declare that you are an unregistered security or you fail the Howey test, you're going to get delisted from everything. And we've seen how that worked out before with Uniswap, right? Because Uniswap, quote unquote, a decentralized exchange. Well, the, the, the exchange is decentralized, but their user interface, their website that allows you to access tokens, to swap, trade, whatever. They delisted a bunch of tokens from their website because, quote unquote, the foundation owns the website. So which meaning like and they, and they got delisted, you know, Uniswap probably didn't want to delist any coins. But when the SEC comes knocking on your door saying, hey, these are unregistered securities or these are A, B and C and those coins get wiped off the map. Well, guess what happens? Same thing. So no different than what I think is going to happen to CADEX and all these new products launching in all, every ecosystem. Right. When these regulators come and they are deemed unregistered securities and they have to delist them. If you if your exchange operates in the USA, done. I think it's going to be just a landslide. So anytime I see anything with a pre-mine or a, uh, they did an ICO, I'm just like, nope, not, not my cup of tea. Gaffa, gaffa. Gaffa, gaffa. So only on Binance. I don't think I've ever seen anything that's only on Binance and ever doesn't look like this. So, um, Gava token is a project that started on the fourth quarter of 2021. The product made in is made of multiple assets. First, to create a crypto token by the Gava token. Second, to create an API that will increase functionality for developers so they can integrate with their system to make payment processes simple. Third, to develop a P2P game that's by the Gava. Like all these gaming projects, guys, you know how I feel about them. Volume is toast. 300 million. Market cap doesn't exist supply can't be confirmed and the project's been out for only a month now i wouldn't i wouldn't i probably wouldn't go into any farther than that but let's take a look 
They just pasted their smart contract over here. Submitted for verification at bscscan.com on Gafa token version 1.2. Contracts apply 1 billion. I would stay. I would just. Looks a little shady to me. I don't even know what to say about that one. It's probably solidity because it's on BSC. No formal verification. Proof of stake. And they're definitely going to be centralized and probably going to get labeled as an unregistered security. we banging through them tonight, boys and girls. Clay. 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 Looks like it's on its own chain, Clay Network. Take a look at the chart. Launched in early 2020 at the beginning of the bull run. Looks like day one investors are still up, so it doesn't look like it was a rug and dumper. Looks so good so far. Clay is a public blockchain focused on metaverse, GameFi, and creator economies. Officially launched in June of 2019, it is the dominant blockchain platform in South Korea and is now undergoing global business expansions for its international base in Singapore. These business expansion activities are supported by the Clay Growth Fund, which aims to grow the ecosystem built on Clayton. Uh, the fund is managed and distributed by the Clayton Foundation, a Singapore-based nonprofit, and is established in August of 2021. At the end of the metaverse development, there is simply building the metaverse. Clayton offers the end-to-end -end metaverse packages that include customizable L2 solutions, SDK, smart contracts, libraries, IPFS solutions, wallets, coin exchanges, oracles, bridges, and all other ecosystems for supporting solutions of supporting services such as stablecoin integrations, NFT marketplaces, TradeFi interfaces, and more. Clayton utilizes an optimized version of Istanbul. BFT the enables transactions to achieve absolute finality within seconds, allowing for a responsive user experience and enabling users. Enabling use cases near instant and blah, 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 blah. Uh, Clayton's uh, data guarantees proof of work and proof of stake blockchains exhibit blah, blah, blah. So Clayton supports EVM, so it's EVM compatible. You guys know how I feel about EVM anything. I won't touch it because I know that the underlying coding language Solidity has fatal flaws in it and they can't update them because they update them, they'll wipe off all the EVM. So if there's any things issues with this merge and they have to update Solidity for whatever reason because something's not working right, it's gonna cripple all the EVM. So I think it's just a hot, hot, hot mess looking to happen, but um, they're their own chain, so we'll give them that. Updated, most recent updates were very recent, so they got people working on it. Let's take a look at their contributors. They got 36 different players working on I mean, that's an active. That is a very active GitHub. That's what you want to see, right? Um, we got uh, 398 comets, 200, 200, 158. Like, there's some players building on this. They're doing something with it, so give them that. So I'd say that could be shillable. Oh active I would say it's shillable so I could see them getting a marketing team getting some influencers behind it and pumping that for sure what's the market cap market caps yeah see it's it's 725 million that's higher than Kadena would I ever put anything into something that has a higher market cap than Kadena that can't that can't evolve that didn't solve the blockchain trilemma that we have no idea how infinitely scalable it is that's also going to Singapore you know nah Probably not. I would be targeting, I would be looking to target bigger, bigger countries that have more adoption. You know, I think Africa is going to be a big player in the, in the blockchain industry in a few years. Big, big player. So can we tell if they're proof of stake or proof of work? Let's see how their network secured. Uh, at the core, Clayton's unique tokens, uh, uh, unique take on decentralization is their governance council, their GC comprising a little global enterprises and DAOs across geographical oh no way get out of here with that your governance structure is it sounds they they got their uh what do they call that uh what did uh H bar call that um gosh what did H bar call that the consortium their consortium yeah I hard pass on that one I was I would have said it was shillable but now I say it's a hard pass Uh, I don't know. I don't even feel like looking into it. No clue. Dot 
doubt they use formal verification. No idea. We just say proof of stake, but I don't really know. No idea. Probably going to be an unregistered security. Unicrypt, Unicrypt. UNIC. UNCX, UNCX. Yeah, ADA focuses on a lot on after. I, I mean, it's with that gold, they found a, uh, what is it, $10 trillion gold reserve there or something crazy. Like the largest gold reserve in the history of the world is found there. That's big money for a country like Africa. And, you know, who knows? I think, I think they have the ability, just like people underestimated China, you know, in the 80s and said, oh, China was never going to do this, this, and the other. Uh, but your volume on Unicrypt is dead. 65,000. And that 65,000 volume is up 590%. So, you know, that $65,000 could have been one whale dumping that. Or just the network getting busy. Uh, let's take a look and see what Unicrypt is. Unicrypt is a deflationary governance token by Unicrypt platform, a platform which provides services and that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> all time. So... You know how I am about summer lows. This one actually is still maintaining its above summer lows. So from a TA standpoint, not too shabby, but the market cap's also only 85,000 or 8.5 million. Um, the only platform, oh no, you got trading volume going on in other platforms. If you're going to dump those, you probably want to do it on Uniswap and just bite the bullet for gas fees because that's where the most liquidity looks like it's at. But I still wouldn't touch it. Take a look at their code. The one developer. Yeah, I wouldn't touch it. Not at all. Don't like when I don't see a GitHub. <sighs> what, what blockchain is that on? It's going to be Solidity. Two audits. Clover Finance. Now, as far as uh, their app, I was like, oh, dude, that app is sweet, right? Like, they actually had a really well put together app. But then I was like, then I started thinking about Voyager and all these other crypto wallets, right? <laughs> that people's money got all locked up in and they couldn't get out of it. So I was like, uh, I wouldn't use it, but. Oh, uh, yeah, and it's just. I mean, I would have to assume that I'm a, every investor that has ever invested in this is down money uh, looking at that chart, but I'm no science rocketist, so D-Y-O-R. So what makes Clover unique? Clover Finance was designed to offer more than a single um, service to its users. It's built on a blockchain operating system. The network contains the storage layer of smart contracts, a DeFi protocol layer and an e-app layer. The Clover Network provides a full-service crossing decentralized finance DeFi bridge. It provides a flawless portal for everyone, including novices, into the world of DeFi. With Clover, developers can not only easily access and use DeFi, they can also create decentralized applications and dApps across the blockchain. Clover allows... Clover allows relayers in transactions to act on behalf of a sender and they can cover gas fees and base currencies. Just seems like a bunch of, uh, how is the network scared? Clover is a open project that is conductly uh, dedicated by a, a whole community. The CLV token is a multi-use asset in the Clover finance ecosystem. CLV is used for governance purposes and for voting on upgrades. 
Holders of the CLV token can uh, nominate node validators on the network uh, using a single click deployment. Uh, nomination, a nomination of a validator is done using proof of stake consensus. Yeah, so it's proof of stake. And I think it's a substrate framework on Polkadot parachain. So it's probably in Solidity. So I would say, looks like it's failing. Just my opinion, but I look at the charts, price is falling. But probably, probably going to get in trouble for using that terminology. So let's take a look at their code. So last updated on January 5th, and this is the, this is the bear market for builders. Like you hear people say that over and over again, bear market for builders, bear market for builders. I would expect to see just constant development going on, but maybe let's check out everything last updated in January. Last updated in January, 18 contributors. Let's take a look at their contributors. And yeah, you can see like when it launched in October development a uh, month later, a lot of development or two sprints of development and then just phasing out, phasing out, phasing out. And then ever since January, it looks like there's just not much going on here. I don't see any developer on their team or at least in this section anyways, that has a big background in blockchain development. But you know, they got, could have always started and created a new GitHubs, but most developers look at GitHub like their badge of honor. So like I can go over to the Kadena team and see every product they've worked on since like 2015. Uh, so that would make me say that um, I don't see any updated code being solidity or substrate, if you will. Uh, does not use formal verification, makes me very sketched out on it. Uh, it's proof of stake, which is going to be inherently centralized and will become a unregistered security when the SEC drops the ban hammer. The next one, Teller, 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 Teller. Going to pick apart chat projects right now from the jump. People aren't going to get going to know what to do with us. You got it, Drew. You got it, man. These are what everybody should be asking themselves. And if you guys ever are listening to anything in here and you don't agree with it, contact their team directly. This is just me doing a brief overview and giving you guys my honest opinion. None of this is fact-based. Nothing I say in this stream should be taken as fact-based. I don't know what the hell you can even say now. I feel like I just got to sit in here. You guys are going to be reading Bible verses soon. <laughs> and I'll probably get a, <laughs> I'll get a cease and desist from Jesus Christ. <laughs> You took that out of my Bible verse. You're assassinating my character. Holy shenanigans, Batman. All right, back to it, back to it, boys and girls. Teller, teller. Market cap being 30 million. Volume, volume is three times the market cap, up 640%. Israel Delon, what up, homie? What up, my dude? Welcome to the party, man. Stewie the Crazy, what up? Good to see y'all. Blue, what up? Rick B in the house. Drew, what up? PKM in the house, what up? Turn of day. Thank y'all, thank y'all. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate y'all. Big time, big time. So we got Teller, Teller, Teller. So looking at the charts, you know, I, I always like when I look at a chart and I don't see absolute red. Um, I like also when you see that you don't see that huge massive spike in the beginning and then a dump off which makes me think that there's a bunch of you know a bunch of VCs that got in early and dumped it this one looks so far so decent um, you know the uh, next the first red flag I would say is though is like you put in a crazy pair insane parabolic high in all coin season and then the market got bullish back over here in, no in September and October uh, September and November most good projects like big players were putting in new all-time high new all-time high so that would be something i'd be like okay is that was that all teller had teller is a decentralized oracle protocol oracles are a key part of blockchain infrastructure that provides updates uh valuable off-chain data making it available for on-chain smart contracts teller oracle supplies data that can be requested validators validated and put to on-chain permissionless permissionlessly uh, with data reporters competing for incentives of TBR. Data reporters bring valuable information on chain for a wide range of DeFi applications. Teller Oracles work by incentivizing data reports to put in. So it's an Oracle network, right? It's an Oracle platform. So the first thing you want to ask yourself with Oracles is are your Oracles decentralized, right? Because if they're not, they're going to get replaced by API and API is doing a decent in a decentralized way. 
Uh, if API were to fix their tokenomics, or they actually get enough use case where the tokenomics are offset by people wanting to use their their APIs, I think that they'll be better because they're going to be in a they're decentralized. So you take a look if you go back and you guys haven't seen my interview with API three, one of the one of the best interviews as far as a tech standpoint goes. So just search Ryan Matta API three, and you'll hear Emilio, I think that Ar Armanio, Armenio, Armenio, and he'll explain the difference between centralized oracles and decentralized APIs because. No, that was Ergo. Who was it, the uh, API 3 guys? I forget, but search Ryan at API 3, you'll see. Uh, he does a really, really good job explaining the difference between Chainlink. So like right now, I'm getting, say, price information on Bitcoin from Chainlink. I honestly, I don't know where, uh, is, is Chainlink getting that Oracle data from Coinbase or is Coinbase getting that Oracle data from Chainlink or is CoinMarketCap giving, you know, you don't have an idea. You just say, hey, Chainlink, I want Bitcoin, but you don't know where that Bitcoin price is actually getting pulled from. So, and you will you can find it out because like say, um, you'll see like those huge wicks, those insane high wicks up to like a, you know, billion percent or a billion dollars. And then, and you see it on say Coinbase and then you see it on CoinMarketCap and then you only see it on Bybit. Well, then you know that Bybit's getting the same Oracle data from Coinbase and from that Coinbase and CoinMarketCap are getting because those are the only sites that had that crazy high wick. KuCoin didn't have it, right? Probably because KuCoin's Oracle data didn't spike, meaning they weren't getting it from the same source. So it's a rabbit hole that I never went to, wanted to go down because, I mean, there's just so many more. Oracles are oracles never seem to be the big hitters, the big profitable projects. They just, I, I don't know why. I don't know why that is, but this one actually seems okay. But not never something I would invest in, but I could see the use case for it and maybe they become better than Chainlink. I don't know. It just seems like we, you got a couple Oracle players already. Do we need another one? I don't know. And what do they, what do they do different than Chainlink? I don't know. It just, it'd be a lot of time for me to actually look into it. And I don't have the desire to even start, but take a look at their GitHub. Last updated on June 14th. So it looks, they got active code active ish three days ago. Yep. Uh, contributors. Let's take a look at their team. Looks like consistent development going on in the project. So I'd say good. Uh, uh, Aura Clown. Aura Clown. I like that. So he must be big into Oracle. So I would say. And what type of coding language we got here? Poly Harmony ETH. So it's going to be Solidity. So I'd say hard pass for me. Not big into Oracles, but. Um, codes active, solidity, no formal, proof of stake, and would you make it centralized to me? And unregistered security if the SEC drops the banny. Reef, baby, reef. Puff, puff, pass in this bitch. Yo, Danny B, what up, homie? Double A, what up, what up? KDA Kings, baby. Yeah, I got you on a king, double A. Uh, what's your, uh, let me, let me bang through these coins real quick and I'll grab everybody's Twitter that doesn't have one. I'm going to do that. I'll open up the stream for everybody too. So if anybody's watching this and you guys want a King and you didn't get one, everybody's getting them. I'm giving out. I want to get rid of those things. They're such a pain to give out. I'm ready to be out of them. <laughs> so anybody that wants one, I'll probably actually go live in my main channel one of these days too, and just get rid of the rest of them. All right, circulating supply. Circulating supply, 19.75 billion. So that is probably something I've never seen before. The circulating supply is higher than the total supply and there's no max supply. That's normally not right, guys. Oh, guess what else I found out yesterday? I was digging into some of these uh, shady exchanges. Guess guess what Blue's favorite coin is? And guess who was guess who printed 24 million fake coins? I don't know how that I don't know how they were doing this, but there was a uh, one of these shady exchanges and don't this allegedly, so always fact check it and do your own research. I found it on Google. They were printing they printed 24 million fake XRP coins. So these fake big shady exchanges, um, I want to say it was Thodex, Thodex. Uh, 
uh, manager of Ripple Cryptocurrency Exchange arrested for scam. A Japanese manager of an exchange for uh, for the Ripple cryptocurrency was arrested Wednesday for allegedly swindling $1.4 million, $12,470 from a depositor, police said. Uh, first arrest. Uh, I hope that wasn't it. Fake airdrops. Any investors could have lost 128 million to fake cryptocurrency exchange reports. Scammer 3 reported to use fake domain apps, blah, blah, blah. Indian investors have lost 128 million. INR Core, a fake cryptocurrency exchange, has cheated them due to a lack of knowledge. Man, I'm looking for this one. A scam impersonating Ripple CEO going to promote for a fake 50 million airdrop. Oh man, I'll have to find that one. More than uh, 1.4 million XRP stolen through fake Ledger Chrome extensions. I think this this guy was basically taking money and selling XRP <laughs> that he didn't have. You know, like we kind of said that. Like, why does why do these exchanges all of a sudden shut down and shut down withdrawals because they don't they're selling coins that they don't have? Look into it. There might be something there. There might be a story there behind it. <laughs> I can't. I don't have time to find. Out. I want to keep running through these. So Reef, do we even see a GitHub for Reef? Let's take a look at the source code. Updated four days ago, so we got a good source code. Contributors, there's only six contributors. You know, like look at some of these products and how big they are. And you look at their team, you're like, wow, they only got six people on it. So Nether Drake's got a pretty active GitHub, but. He was bullish. He was banging out stuff in March, and then all of a sudden, don't see him for almost a year until June, over a year. Um, like this just doesn't look like a really active part of their GitHub. But some of these products, just, they just don't need to be updated that much, you know. So I would say Reef. Let's take a look and see what Reef even is. Market cap seventy four million. This product's been out for a while, hasn't it? Launched in January of 2021. Um, failed to put in new all-time highs. That would be red flag number two. What is Reef? Reef is a reliable, ex extensionable, effective, fast layer one blockchain for DeFi, NFTs, and gaming. Built using Substrate Framework, it provides highly scalable, enabling almost instant low-cost transactions and supports Solidity and EVM allowing developers to seamlessly migrate their dApps from Ethereum without any change in their code. Reef Change is the most advanced EVM compatible blockchain. Uh, it's self upgradable and has no on-chain governance. Its infrastructure allows for EVM extensions, which, al which also allow for native token bridges, um, scheduled calls, i.e. recruiting payments, reoccurring payments, and smart contracts in place, code upgrades. In the near future, it will support additional VMs which will allow developers to write code in multiple programming languages. The network runs on Normadate, proof of stake, and POS consensus mechanism, which offers scalability and low fees. Reef chain development. How many coins are there out in circulation? Reef change is a smart contract platform, EBM, solidity design, blah, 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 blah. For gaming for everyone presents Reef the circulating supply of 14 billion tokens, while 38% of the Reef token chain is staked. Reef chain today has over 23 validators. The current inflation rate is 8.3%. Try again, I'm trying to get your research media. Big X, what up, Drew? Good to see you. Mr. Miles, what up, what up? 
Yeah. What makes Reef Chain unique? Reef is generated towards cryptocurrency newcomers. How is Reef secured? Reef uses a proof of stake, blah, 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 blah. So hope they're going to tell us how it is, uh, how they, how they raise funds. Uh, Binance offers the largest number of pairs, uh, September 20th. Wow. Blah, 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 blah. That's a lot. 8.3%. So I would definitely just hard pass on anything that's got a, that I don't see a major, major use, use case for. Uh, what did we say? Their code was active. Code was active. Yep. So how that even goes, say Reef's a shillable one. I could see them shilling that solidity if it doesn't, or it's a substrate. Substrate solidity, same thing to me. Proof of stake centralized. On reg, if the SEC drops the ban hammer, Chainy Linky, Chainy Linky. Chain Link, you guys know it's got a $3 billion market cap. I mean, it's just so high. It's only 47% of coins out, so it's just a consistent inflation rate. They're always, for the next however many years, they're going to be putting coins out into circulation. Um, again, all coin season, all time high. Then you had two opportunities to do it again, didn't do it. And now you're back over here putting in lower lows than summer. Anytime I see a product putting in lower lows than summer, I personally don't want anything to do with it. So what is chain link found in the 2017 chain link and Google introducing introduction of staking in 2022 chain link has grown from uh, aggregating and providing cryptocurrency price data to DeFi protocols like Aave to a lot more. The ecosystem currently is across over 1 billion data points, securing over 75 billion in value through uh, 1,000 product integrations where 700 Oracle networks, mainstream organizations like AccuWeather, FedEx, uh, FlightStats, uh, and the Associated Press have partnered with Chainlink for data verifications. So, hey, I mean, that's those are some big partnerships. That's a lot, lot, lot. Oh, here you go. During the ICO for Chainlink in September of 17, during the ICO, done. Won't touch it. We've seen what Binance just got hit with it. And why I say that is a hard, hard pass. Um, I don't need to look at their GitHub, but we can. Just You just seen like everything that the SEC targets, like the bigger projects, as soon as they get big enough for the SEC to take a big chunk of their cut or give them a hard time or forcibly shut them down, uh, you know, it is what it is. Seven hours ago, so they got active GitHub, but that ICO is just the nail in the coffin for me. Um, active GitHub, I believe it's Solidity, uh, no formal verification. So can you trust that it's not going to get hacked? I highly doubt it. Would anybody hack it for any reason? I don't know. It makes it centralized to me, unregistered. Oh, even worse. Just, well, let's see. I got another one for ICO. Bitcoin Cash. Oh, did I finish doing all that? Yeah, I did that all. Bitcoin Cash. Man, I'm good. I don't know why these things burn me out so much. Probably because I just don't stop talking the whole time about the same thing over and over again. Uh, Bitcoin Cash. You guys know what Bitcoin Cash is. We don't really have to look much into it. Volumes, decent. It's got $2 billion market cap. Am I going to bet on an old tech that was a fork of Bitcoin that just didn't, it was designed to be a better version of Bitcoin and it just didn't do it. Uh, same supply, same type of coin. What are their block sizes bigger or something like that? Bitcoin Cash is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system that aims to become a sound global money with fast payments, micro payments, privacy enabled, blah, blah, blah. It's the same physical money such as a dollar in hand uh, directly, uh, blah, 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 permissionless, decentralized Bitcoin Cash is an alternative to the oldest and the most traded cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. Only the BCH network is much faster and cheaper. In 2017, BCH developers modified the BTC code, releasing their own version of the software in a full-fledged competitive product, which split Bitcoin into two blockchains. 
Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and connectively two assets, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, is clear result of the hard fork. Moreover, another hard fork which divided Bitcoin Cash into two parts, Bitcoin ABC and Bitcoin SV, took place in 2018, in the fall of 2018. There were several distinctive features that separate BCH from the original. The main one remains about the block size. Okay, I thought that's what it was. Uh, blocks in the Bitcoins can be larger, which means that they can put more transactions per block. So basically, how your blockchains work is your blockchains, right? All of, all that's in a block is transactions. That's it. Smart contracts are transactions too. So, right? So they're in a block, right? And then the next block comes on here, right? And the next block and the next block and the next block. Each block is intertwined. This block will contain the hash from the previous block. So as I'm minting into this new block, the first transaction that's going to go into this new block is the transaction from the previous block. Sorry, the this first transaction that's going to go into the block is the miner payout, right? So what, or maybe that's the last one. So it's like whatever miner solves the hash. I want to say whatever miner solves the hash, he goes into the next block. So the first transaction is the payout of the miner rewards from the previous block. The second transaction is the hash from the previous block, right? And those hashes are what link each block together. So what Bitcoin Cash did here, and I'm not saying this is all they did, but this was the start. The first thing they did was they increased the block size. So what does that do, right? If they, maybe they're producing blocks more often, but they're also producing bigger blocks. So now all I'm doing is this. Now, who's, who's, who stores the blockchain? Your nodes. Why is everybody complaining about Bitcoin? Because the nodes are already storing 300 gigs. So in 20 years, if they're going to be storing like five, 10 terabytes, right? And every time a block is minted on BCH now, the block size is double. So you have twice the amount of size requirements. So you're still stacking more blocks more often but it's never going to be enough to meet the door demands of global world adoption might be next week might need next month if everybody migrated from bitcoin over to bitcoin cash and you try to do it with the lightning network you're still storing so much size and so much data and then so what did bitcoin cash go up to in size let me show you the difference bitcoin sv tried to do it with a two gig block <laughs> this is bonkers man like people are just throwing shit at the wall back in the day trying to anything to make bitcoin better and make the next get out of the rat race right let me just show you that there's got to be a good diagram on here Man, I had such a good diagram of this. I wish I could find it. It's probably going to take me a minute. So here's an example of what I was talking about here, how blocks are linked together. They're using the Straw 256 algorithm. And this shows you right here, right? So each block has the hash from the previous. See, this is the previous hash right here. Shaw 256 algorithm scrambles it and then puts that into the next block, right? And this is how your blocks are all linked together. Because when I'm mining a new block, this block here has the hash of this block here. And that's why it's immutable. That's what makes these records immutable.
Yo, Jamboy Crypto in the house. What up, homie? Welcome to the squad, my dude. Welcome to the squad. I'm going to find it. I'm not giving up on this one so easy. Ah, there it is. There it is. Boom. Right. So this is Bitcoin, right? Like the size of one megabyte. That's this isn't it. This is one, two and three. It's such a big difference. I wish I could show you guys the comparison. It would be like comparing a like my finger, like the tip of my fingernail to my fist. Like that's the difference between Bitcoin's block size and then Bitcoin's SVs. Bitcoin's is two gigs. And Bitcoin cash block size is 332 megabits. Bitcoin is one megabit and Bitcoin SV is is two gigs, I think. Which is crazy. You're gonna be storing so much <laughs> so much, so much space, it's just nobody's ever gonna use it. It's never gonna get globally adopted, in my opinion. So that's a hard pass. Uh, it doesn't even matter if their code's updated or not. It's just not going to do anything. Last updated on June 11th. He was working on it. Contributors. They got to have some OG contributors on this one. Yeah. 385 Merc. What Merc or Merc Warner? Merc Warner. But I will say it's decentralized. So that that is the plus. I believe it's decentralized. You never really know till you don't know. <laughs> uh, code looks active. Uh, it's in Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin script. Uh, formal verification. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure they can use formal verification. I highly doubt they do, but proof of work to make it decentralized in nature. Um, did they do any pre-mine? That's the question. Was there a pre-mine? Not really sure on that one. I don't know if there's a pre-mine or not. If there was a pre-mine, then I would say, hey, no, I won't touch it. Not sure how that one's going to roll out. Crypto Knight. What's the ticker on that? STC. Crypto Knight STC. I don't get. Crypto Knight, am I missing something? Is I gotta go to Coin Gecko? What is the King things? Uh, KDA, uh, KDA back Kings NFT whitelist spots. So. No idea. So I'd say a hard pass on it. <laughs> Can't even tell. 
No clue. No clue. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah, who cares? Telecoin, last but not least, baby. Last but not least, boys and girls, let's get it. Telcoin volume is roughly 2%, decent. 62% of coins out in circulation. Uh, ETH and Polygon, so two red flags right off the rip. Uh, looks like a solid dumper. Almost looks like a dead project that got some type of marketing momentum and then just been straight down the hill ever since. Uh, top exchanges for trading Telcoin currently KuCoin, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Telcoin established in 2017. Uh, Telcoin leverages blockchain technology to provide access to decentralized financial services on any mobile device. The company is regulated in Singapore. Jeez, Telcoin is the ERC20 token. That is some, uh, and one of the most secure computer networks, the Visa the via the telecoin mobile application telecoin users store and transact their assets using two or three multi multi signatures ethereum wallets um how many coins telecoins are there are blah 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 telecoin built on ethereum blockchain at its launch in 2017 25% of the coins were distributed in crowd sales to investors another 15% were retra retained by the telecoin team so pre mine no thank you sir so what do we got here? Let's take a look at their code for you guys. They got one people, one person on this project. Um, and I see like the played API, the unofficial checkout.com client library, the Ethereum token list, a token list and a wire API. They got three contributors. I would stay away from this one, guys. I don't think they got the team to cut it. But they do got updated code, so for me, that would be a hard, hard pass. Oops. Hard pass. Uh, it's active. Uh, it would be solidity. Be not oh no definitely no formal verification on that one uh be proof of stake be centralized to me and i would say it's an unregistered security <laughs> couldn't sell my telecoin because gas fees were half the cost danny b this is just an outro because i was recording that so i'll be right I'll, i'm coming back i'm not leaving all right, YouTube, so that's a wrap. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you guys so much for stopping by the channel. Again, my name is Ryan Meta. If you guys want to learn more about how I do research or how to investigate GitHub or how to investigate any of these projects, swing by the channel. We go live every Monday through Friday from uh, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Appreciate you guys. Thank you.